All righty. It's a moment we've all been waiting for. George Springer is returning to Houston to maybe play against the Houston Astros. He did sit for the Blue Jays today. But that was a planned day of rest, or that's the day to rest after being hit by the pitch. So we'll see what happens from here. But we'll talk about that and more on this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Doc Strohs. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram, and at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. All right. Thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. We had a lot of people who wanted to watch yesterday's video on YouTube. It was 3,000 strong and going. Everybody wanted to watch us talk about Shohei Itani. Almost go perfect. So why haven't you and why haven't you subscribed to us? Just go to YouTube. Search up Locked On Astros. Press the subscribe button. Do us a favor. You listen to us every day. You make us your first listen. So just go and do that and give us a like and go and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast. So I know I kind of teased it before the show, but this is going to be old school Astros. When I say old school, I mean George Springer is coming back to town to face the new school, Jeremy Pena. And the Houston Astros. I know the new school Jeremy Pena Astros are not doing as well, but something we didn't get a chance to talk about yesterday. Guess what? The 2021 Astros were six and six through 12 games, too. And the uh, 2020 Astros were six and six through uh, 12 games as well. That's Both right. those teams went pretty far as well. So you can't look at this. In fact, last year's squad that were two games away from uh, winning. They, uh, the World Series or whatever, um, they, they, uh, I think they went seven and 10 before they started, um, actually winning. They won the next 95 game or they, they won 95 <laughs> games or no, they didn't win 95 games. They won right, 95 but, games in a row. It was an amazing run, <laughs> but they won 95 games from that point to, um, to go ahead and win as many games as they did to, uh, lead to the playoffs. So the season is not over. The pitching doesn't look good right now, especially with Odorizzi, especially with the lineup hitting as bad as they're doing. But the season's not over. It's only 12 games, and I know we all want to jump ship, but we can't. We just got to hold hold the ship steady, mate. Well, hold the ship steady. Yeah, so with the 6-6 six and six record, the, the bullpen's not the issue. Um, the starting pitching in Framber Valdez has not done great. Um, Luis Garcia's done his job. Um, for the most part, Justin Verlander's done his job for the most part. So it's not really the starting pitching I am too concerned about. Um, Jay Goderizzi, that's just another story. I guess we'll get into that. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time on him because I think the jury out on him right now is he's just not good. And until he proves otherwise, there's not a whole lot of people in Houston that are going to like watching a game where he starts. And he he's the only person that can turn that around. But there are some interesting comments that he made, which makes you think maybe – He's on the edge of greatness, but I don't want to. I want to withhold judgment. Um, but the bullpen's been phenomenal, Eric. This this bullpen really has held things together. If if they wouldn't have come in the game after Oda Rizzi, um, the Angels probably would have scored thirty runs. I mean, they scored at an unbelievable clip while he was in. And then you know, with this offense, they literally it's like they are a vapor of themselves. Here's the. Here's my concern about the six and six record for this year. Okay. Is we're without yet another superstar like Carlos Correa. Okay. I know he wasn't gangbusters every regular season game, but I don't know. And I haven't looked at those two years and I meant to today. I just, it just got, just time got away from me. I don't know that we've ever been averaging two runs a game at the six and six mark. 
I don't, I don't think we've averaged this few. The offense is the real concern here. I'm not jumping ship or, or think it's a wash or we're not going to make the playoffs. But to me, there's more concern this year than there ever has been. And it's got to be something that resolves itself sooner rather than later. Now, get this. The Blue Jays coming to town, Eric, are only ranked. They are the 12th rated um, offense. We are the, Actually, they are the 12th rated pitching group, and we're the 13th rated. So we're right behind them there. But they've only scored 40-something runs. They haven't scored many more runs than us, but they have a better record than us. And they've gotten it done. So the relief pitching, I think, holds up this weekend. Will the bats wake up? That's that's the big question. Will Jordan get to play in the field? Because when he plays in the field, he hits 100 points higher. And I know he hit those two home runs at one game, but he feels more comfortable in left field. So there are a lot of things you wonder that are going to happen this weekend, but they start off well, and we'll get to it with Justin Blander on the mound against the Blue Jays. Yeah, definitely. That's something to kind of discuss. And I'm, I'm looking at Van Graaff's projected um, – like standings for the rest of the season. And they still have the Astros finishing uh, at the top for the rest of the season. Right now, yeah. the Astros are averaging 3.42 runs a game. They're allowing four runs per game. So that's a negative seven run differential. The Angels are scoring five runs a game. They're allowing 4.3 runs uh, a game. The Mariners are kind of where they're maybe a little bit better than they were last year. They're scoring 4.08. They're allowing 3.25. The A's are uh, scoring 4.62 runs per game. They're allowing 3.54 runs per game. A lot of people are like, well, the Rangers, they've added all this offense. Why don't you think they're going to win this year, Eric? This is why. They're scoring 4.82 runs per game. They're allowing 6.27 runs per game. So there's a negative 16 run differential. So the Astros are still projected to have a 89 and 73 record at the end of the season with a run differential of positive 67. So the Astros have a long way to go. A lot of things have to change. You can't have Kyle Tucker hitting the way he is. Yuli Gurriel, whether uh, no matter what's going on, he lost a lot of weight this offseason, but he, he had a great spring. What's going on now? There's a lot of things that have, have got to change right now, but you have everything going wrong at the exact same time. The only thing that's going right is Justin Verlander is pitching like he, uh, like he never had surgery and Christian Javier is pitching great. And we're going to talk about why he's not going to replace Jacob Rizzi in the rotation in a second. And then you have a couple of relievers who are pitching lights out. Uh, but overall it just, this rotation is not as airtight as they appeared in the first uh, four games. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you know, when they went to LA, they were, you know, they actually, they were, they were four and one against them until these last two games where they lost and totally poo pooed the bed there. They, I just, I just don't know. Um, that wasn't a Johnny Depp reference. Um, I just, I just don't know that, you know, the pitching's not a concern of mine. I'm 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 really not concerned with the pitching. When Odorizzi goes out there, I know what Odorizzi's going to do. He's not going to do well, and until he does differently, I'm not going to have any faith in him at all. And he can talk about how the pitches just barely missed and all this stuff. The bottom line is, you gave up six runs off three walks and three hits, and in one inning, you didn't even complete an inning. Like if he went three or four innings and shoved a little bit, and you know like got control of it. And I just, I know he's not going to leave the rotation. I, I understand that. But at the same time, thank God you have Christian Javier. Thank God you have guys in the middle of this rotate in the, in the middle of this bullpen that can come in like a Maton, like a Nary's, these guys, Montero, Stanek, these guys that are throwing well. And even in the absence of Ryan Presley, um, I'm not really worried about the back end. It's it's getting to that back end. And I think with someone like JV on the mound first game, he can neutralize some hitters Friday night. Yeah. So uh, Dusty Baker was uh, asked about uh, whether he's going to remove Jake Odorizzi from the rotation. We'll address why he can't, but he said this. It's only been two starts. That would be the shortest leash in history. Hopefully 
his next start will be better. Hopefully, his next start will be better. Thank you, Dusty. That that builds me with a lot of confidence. <sighs> Makes me want to eat a built bar, doesn't you? Yeah, you know, I had a, I had a couple of built bars today. I had one in the morning for my snack, one in the afternoon just to get me through the day. They're wrapped in 100 percent chocolate. They're they basically it's basically a candy bar that's good for you. Okay, most protein bars are chock full of extra stuff you don't need. They're a, extra heavy on your system. Um, they have. Th- they're just filled with junk, but Built Bars have 100% chocolate wrapped around them. They have 17 grams of protein. They have four to five grams of sugar, four to five net carbs, and about 130 calories. So you take that and compare that to a candy bar. I won't even read the stats. It'll be like reading a Texas Ranger stat line of two for a two and eight team or two and nine team. Um, but they have mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new this month, they have white chocolate cookies and cream. They're phenomenal. I want you to go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKS15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off at built.com. Remember, don't grab another built bar. Take those protein bars you have in your fridge, give them to your friends, and go get a built bar today. All right. What about Blue Nile? Mother's Day is coming up. Wouldn't a gift from there be great? Oh, it, it, it would be great whether she prefers a statement piece or everyday subtle elegance. BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Shop high quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, or gemstone pendant necklaces. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble closing on a deal? Well, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24 7 available via phone to chat or to help you find the memorable gift for that special someone. Mark Mother's Day with something enduring. Classic diamond stud earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, birthstone pendants, and you can find these at every price point. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Astros listeners get $50 off, $500 spent. This product, podcast exclusive, is only good through Mother's Day. Use the promo code Locked On. That's code locked on, plus every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. It's like throwing a perfect game. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Alrighty, so you know that Dusty Baker after that game was not stress-free. He was like, yeah, this is not great. Um, Pulling my pitcher after two outs is not great. And this was actually Jake Odorizzi's second shortest stint in his oh. uh, major league career. The shortest one was last year with uh, with one and two thir- one third innings. And that I think he left with the injury, if I remember correctly. But- yes, he did. And when Kent Emanuel, who yeah. came on our show and right. talked That's about right. it, came That's in right. and he broke the record, you know? That's right. That's right. I remember that now. But, we don't uh, have but, Kent Emanuel anymore. <laughs> I know. Uh, but Baker said that that Christian Javier was coming in to pitch a few innings in a relief of Jake Odorizzi anyway in an attempt to get him further stretched out because after Thursday's off day, the Astros will begin a stretch where they, they would play 33 games in 34 days, and they'll possibly go to a six-man rotation after a uh, shortened spring training. So Javier will be going to the rotation. He will be the sixth guy. So you can't replace Jake Odorizzi with uh, Christian Javier because of that. Uh, Now, does that mean that uh, Jake Odorizzi goes out there two more times and stinks it up and they're like, "Uh, okay, let's DFA him. Let's get rid of him. Let's just eat the money and let's bring up somebody like Hunter Brown who struck out eight guys in five innings, something like that. That could happen, but um, but we saw Christian Javier go out there. He threw 55 pitches in three and two-thirds innings, and he still has not allowed a run this season. Christian Javier is a good pitcher. He's a very good pitcher, and they will not DFA um, Odorizzi. They're just not going to do it. Um, they, they're not going to eat that money. With as budget-minded as this team is, they won't. I, I don't see that. Like I see a 0.00% chance of that happening. Jake Odorizzi is here. He's going to be here for the season. And if he doesn't perform well, he just won't make the playoff roster. Um, 
you know, that that 89 win total that the projections give, I understand it's it's because where they're at. Oh, yeah. There's no way this team lose wins less than less than 90 games. I still have them at 92, 93 wins. I think they turn things around at some they, point. They got to get their crap keep... together. Well, no, I know that. But remember, you said yourself, it's only the first 12 uh-huh. games of the season. Um, but this is a stretch. And we've talked, I've talked about this with different people on spaces about the 33, 33 games over 34 days. And let me tell you something. If there's ever been rest days that are going to be needed, it's going to be here. And so I really hope that Jordan Alvarez gets plenty of time to play in left field. I hope that he gets time to get comfortable in the field. And you know what? Honestly, Eric, I I really hope we don't see this. I hope we don't see someone like Chas McCormick or Jose Siri go three for four in a game, steal two bases, hit a home run, and then sit the next game. That is so infuriating. When a guy's got a hot bat when he's feeling it, you've got to keep him in there. And at at some point, you've got to go against the, well, he's supposed to sit this game. Dude, if he's hot, why take him out? There's a lot of people that steal. um, I've had three different conversations in the last week about why did they sit Bregman after he hit a home run in back-to-back games. That didn't make any sense. I know it was scheduled, but he was swinging a hot bat. And what happened? He kind of cooled off after that. And so they've got to ride the horses that are getting to the finish line. And, I mean, award Chas McCormick with a two or three game in a row start. If he's hitting, if he's catching stuff in the outfield, give him that confidence. I think you only help your player. And if you do that two or three day, give him a day rest. I mean, or make him a make him a pinch runner you know, on, on that second game, give them two days rest, but that's going to be a tough stretch, Eric. They do have to get their proverbial crap together. They've got to start hitting and you know, who's more frustrated about the hitting and the lack of hitting than the fans, the players and the players care deeply. And that's what I love about this team, their character. They will never give up. They will never panic while fans have all these memes and put out all these tweets about how, Oh my gosh, the sky is falling the players will never fall to that level. Um, You know, so let's just hope for the best. Let's hope that we get things started right against Toronto and get back on the winning. I would, I just want to win the series. We don't have to win every game against Toronto, but I think we got to at least take two out of three. Uh, Yeah, for sure. And this is a good team. This is a team that I think is tied with the last I looked, they're tied with the uh, Yankees or close up there with the Yankees. No, they're Um, actually because they they won today, right? I think so. They beat. So, yeah. Yeah, I got it right here. They beat the Red Sox. So I believe they are in they're in first place. They're eight and five. The Yankees are seven and six. The Yankees. Okay, yeah, they're lost today. Yeah, the Yankees lost three to zero. And they walked, and of course, A.J. Hinch defended it. They walked Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera came up in the eighth. There was a guy on second, getting third. The only one run at the time. The better matchup was the guy after him, and they intentionally walked Miguel Cabrera one away from 3,000. And Detroit fans let him have it. But A.J. Hinch said, look, he's trying to get a win for his team. I respect it, but I also respect the fans being upset that he got walked. So we got to wait one more day. To see Miguel Cabrera, I bet you he gets it next game. 3,000 hits. He's from Marque, um, you know, Venezuela, the same hometown that Jose Altuve is from. Yeah, so if you look at where the Astros are, they're batting below the Mendoza line at 199, and uh, their OPS is below 300, which is not good at 282 as a team. They're on, uh, their slugging percentage is 355 as a team. Only the Royals, the White Sox, and the Reds have a lower on-base percentage. Only the Twins, the Diamondbacks, and Reds have a lower team batting average. So it's just their Astros are just not doing it on offense. I mean, you have a couple games where they explode for maybe six, seven runs or something. Then you have other games where they're scoring two runs, maybe yeah. no runs, and um, I it's just seeing all the comments about um, somebody said that, well, uh, Otani only pitched that well because he was given a six run lead. No, Otani pitched that well because he's a great pitcher and he knew how to pitch the Astros. He dominated them. We're not taking anything away from Shohei Otani when he's on. He is on. He won the MVP last year for a reason. He can be one of the best pitchers in baseball. And he dominated the Astros, but 
Jake Odorizzi to his uh, defense, he recognized that what the heck was I doing walking the leadoff hitter? Granted, it was Shohei Otani, but still, you got to go after that first hitter. And there's just a lot of things that happen in that game. But let's go ahead and focus a little bit on this series that's coming up and try not to look at the fact that the Astros are six and six. We can go look at everything else, but let's look at what's happening. George Bringer is coming back to Texas. He's going to play in front of his not hometown, but his uh, where he made his major league debut. And we supported him all these years. And it'll be great to do that. So I'm going to bet that people are going to give him a standing ovation or not. What do you think? I don't know about bet online if that's a prop bet or anything. It's probably not a prop bet, but I guarantee you they're going to stand up and clap. Everybody loves George Springer. And everybody's going to stand up and clap when they hear this betonline.net ad read it is the number one source for all your betting stats and sports info the nba playoffs are in full swing and they're actually pretty exciting this year go check out all the latest odds i mean the props i mean you know how many how many points is joel and bead going to drop it, are the are the Mavericks going to be able to recover with Jokic not not going to Game Three? So many questions out there. This is your continued number one source for all sports wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. If you head to the website today or use your mobile device, you can learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So make sure that you go. I mean, you can bet on the home run champ. I mean, right now Vlad Guerrero Jr. has five home runs. He's I believe he's leading the league. And he's actually one of the guys that I've picked to be the home run leader at the end of the season. Or do you want Jordan Alvarez? So go to bet online. Remember, it's where the game starts. All right. So make sure you go check out the Locked On Now podcast. They do a great job uh, compiling all the different um, all the different podcasts. Locked On Red Sox. Locked On. You talked about the Blue Jays. They won. I don't. Uh, they do have a host now, so they they do this awesome podcast about. I mean, they go ahead and do this. So just go check out all the nows. They'd say. If they're excited, yay, they do it. It's great now. If they're boo, um, Shoei Tani almost threw a perfect game against us. They may be a little bit negative, but it's just a great way to just hear what's going around this great sport of baseball. So go check out the Locked On Now podcast and uh, just hear what's going around uh, this great game of baseball. So I want to look at just a couple, uh, compare kind of the Astros offense to the Blue Jays um, offense. The, the Blue Jays have 16 home runs. The Astros, believe it or not, have 14 home runs. Yeah. The Ast- the Blue Jays have 51 RBIs. The Astros have um, 40. The Astros are batting 199. The Blue Jays are batting 252. Um, so there is some discrepancy there a little bit. Um, <laughs> so if you're looking at the OPS, which is what I kind of look at, the Astros are at 637, and the Blue Jays are um, kind of hard to find with their logo. It's 725. So there's a big, big difference there on every level. And I know you, you kind of brought up this, the runs. They haven't scored that many runs. They've only scored 52 runs, and the Astros have scored uh, 41. But overall, this team is so much more capable of than what they're doing. Once this team, the, the Blue Jays, I guess both teams are much more capable off offensively. Which team do you think would break out in the series? Well, right now I have no reason to think the Astros will break out because of what they've done. Wah, wah. But well, I mean, I mean, you, you yeah, have I my honest opinion, you know, people are always like, well, Brett, you're a homer, H town, you're a homer. Well, that's fine. I mean, I can call a spade a spade. The bottom line is until the Astros bats show up, I don't know if they will show up. And, I know it's a six and six. It's it, it, it's the only twelve game season, but they have looked absolutely terrible at the plate. They haven't been taking good swings. Oh, you know, I hear Kyle Tucker keeps getting unlucky and all this stuff. Well, that's great. Well, excuses are like noses. Everybody's got one. So until this team turns it around, you have a very dangerous lineup in the Toronto Blue Jays that have an electric atmosphere that they bring in Boba Shett. Vlad Guerrero Jr. They had Kevin Biggio, who Biggio's not actually hitting that well, but he's coming home to Houston where he grew up. And so he, and he might well. be up yeah. for this series. And so, look, if the, the Astros are really good at putting things behind them. I think the Astros are really good at, you know what, when you think they're down the dumps, they surprise you. So if you mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns with the Astros. 
I think if the Astros can set the tone early in the first game, I think it will help because you'll give Justin Verlander that run support he needs. You know, last game he pitched, they only gave him four runs, but it was better than the one they gave him the first time, and he lost two to one, and he got the loss. If they put him like four to five runs in the first four or five innings, I think that sets the tone for the series. But you have to keep going, and the jostling of the lineup cannot keep keep going the way it is. Sometimes guys need to get comfortable in a spot where they're at. And I just hope that they can get comfortable. They've got three more games at home, and then they go on the road for several games. They need to to light the fire. They need a spark to get the fire started. I don't know if that spark is Jordan. I don't know if that spark is Jeremy Pena leading off again. He's done decent in the leadoff spot, but that's that's still, look, there's a lot of people, and I love Jeremy Pena, and I'm not knocking him here because I betted him to be the rookie of the year this year for, for myself. But right now, I think the expectations are really, really high for him. I think we need to temper our expectations, give this kid a chance to grow. But who do you think, if I said I need one bat to get this offense going, do you think it's like one of these unsung heroes, like a Jose Siri, like a Chas McCormick, one of the one of the lesser guys, not one of the leaders, not one of the veterans? Who do you think does 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 Kyle Tucker need to take off with? You know, I think his, it's Kyle Tucker. Okay. Uh, this team goes with Kyle Tucker. Uh, the team w- w- got on fire when Kyle Tucker went on fire last year. So I think Kyle Tucker is the MVP. One as he goes, the team goes. I mean, and what about Jordan Alvarez? He seems to whenever he shows up and hits. Oh well, yeah. It you know it seems like they they score a lot of runs. Yeah, I mean, I I think that he's still. I mean, he came back and hit those two home runs, and I know he hasn't been. A, I mean, he's only played a couple games back, so I give him a little bit of time to get his feet under him. But I'm not too worried about Alvarez. But um, Tucker, he's played almost every game, so I would I say all eyes are on Kyle Tucker at this point. But also, Yuli Gurriel is somebody that is a little bit alarming. This guy can wake up. Um, late arrive at the ballpark and um, hit a home run or get two singles or something. And he's not doing it. And it just, there's something off. I don't know what's going on with him. And so there, there's a couple, it, it, there's too many names in this lineup. While we can focus on Martin Maldonado and Jason Castro, what they're not doing, it's the big guys. The big guys are struggling right now. And it, the Astros aren't alone. There's some big names out there who are struggling. Yeah. But right now, there's just like a whole big chunk of our lineup that's just not hitting the way they're supposed to. And so, yeah, Jeremy Pena, he's done okay as the leadoff. Jose Siri seems to make things happen when he's the leadoff hitter. I don't think that you're going to be able to explain that to Dusty Baker. That's the problem. But um, I think that uh, we'll have to see what happens. But in game one, it's going to be old Astros uh, foe Ross uh, Stripling versus Justin Verlander. And Verlander has faced the Blue Jays a few times. Matt Chapman in his time with the A's has um, hit him pretty well. When I say pretty well, he hit one home run with a zero, uh, a point zero fifty six batting average. I had to say that correctly. So he had one home run uh, basically against him. George Springer has a home run against him batting three eighty five. And then um, that's about it. So not a lot of the guys have faced him with a lot of but, success. But have they said Springer's gonna? I don't. I don't know that Springer's gonna play on. Well, they on they Friday. said that he rested today and he should be fine for the. Oh, okay, okay. Because well, let me right. see the exact quote from the beat writer. So, okay, a rest day expected for George Springer today, but the hope is that he can return in Houston over the weekend after a hit by pitch on the forearm. Okay. Okay. I mean, hey, look, I hope he plays. Um, I really do. You know, Diaz hits hits well against Stripling, 427. Yuli Gurriel, um, your guy, uh, 750 in four at bats. I mean, uh, Michael Brantley, 500. So you you've got some marginal success against against Ross Stripling, and the Astros yeah. have seen him again. Um, but. One of the things, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, we're talking about pitching, we're talking about results. Before we leave the show, I want to mention someone down with the Asheville Taurus that that did something pretty phenomenal in their first pro start before 
we close out. And there's there's some other things that maybe we should mention. Just drop it down <laughs> in there if you want. Um, the Yankees lost their appeal in court, which means that the letter is going to be released. And you're listening to this today on Friday. It's six days from Friday that they're going to release the Yankee letter. And what is it going to say? What What is in there? It may be a big nothing burger. It may be redacted. But this is what Yankees president Randy Levine said. We are disappointed by the court of appeals decision, but we respect it. However, I believe that as described in my petition, this will lead to a lot of bad results down the road. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that means for the league. I don't know if I that think means it's for, for the, league. the Yankees. I think this is going to be, this is going to unveil a whole bunch of maybe, I don't know if it's cover ups, but this may unveil. I think it's going to, I think it's going to show that, that the Yankees, I mean, I'm sorry, that Manfred neglected to focus on other teams that were known to be doing something similar. And let me, if you're a new listener or a podcast, I am not saying or making the case that the Astros did it and look and point, oh, what about them? They did it too. That's not the point here. The point is this team was scapegoated and made to look like they were the only ones who went to the depths of hell. The only ones who were terrible and they cheated. Nobody in baseball has ever laid their eyes on a cheating soul like the Houston Astros. They grabbed a trash can from the pits of hell. They banged it with fury and fire and they reigned supreme in 2017 to win the title. Yes, that's what the Astros did. Absolutely not. That is not what they did. And we're not saying this because we want all the other teams to fall. But these people honestly argue with me, Eric, and they genuinely think that their team didn't do anything wrong. I just want to know what's in the letter. And you know what? If there's nothing in there, then you know what? Who cares? Let's move on. It's just going to be about the Apple watches, but watch, and it'll be about, by the way, did you uh, rewind your uh, blockbuster video <laughs> tape? <or something? laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be something like that. exactly <laughs> right be kind rewind that's you, we're gonna charge you 50 cents so i rewound it no look there's an inch left that you gotta rewind i'm like oh come on oh the good old days of vhs all right um in game two it's gonna be alex mona versus uh jose or kitty her kitty had one good start then the second start was not so good uh, he has he's one and oh with this 7.00 era four strikeouts on the season Mona is 2-0 with a 1.50 ERA with 13 strikeouts. Um, that's going to be a tough matchup in that game. Uh, Mona was once a, a top uh, prospect for the Blue Jays, so that's going to be a tough matchup. And in the last game, it's going to be a 2-10 game. It's going to be old friend, former Mariner, uh, uh, Kazuchi. I can never no. say his name. Kikuchi. K- yeah, Kikuchi. Yes, K- Kikuchi. Kikuchi. Versus yeah, uh, Luis Garcia, and so that's gonna be a um, it's gonna be a familiar matchup. He either pitches really good versus the Astros, or or the wheels they, fall off, or they they hit like eight runs off of him in the first inning. They're he gonna take Jake Odorizzi. Odorizzi. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me coke. Um, so you wanted to mention a prospect? Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, yeah, definitely. So there is a kid named Adrian Chides. Okay. Um, he took the hill for the Astros on the 20th of April. All right. China has got the ball for high A Asheville on Wednesday, and he responded with authority and perfection. In his first start of his pro career, the right-hander twirled six embellished frames, fanning a career-high nine batters, and Asheville held on late for a 3-2 victory over the Jersey over Jersey Shore at Shore Town Park. This kid came in. He basically threw a perfect game in his first ever start. So congratulations to him. And then you mentioned Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown, Eric, is just doing amazing things. Um, his second outing in AAA this year um, on on April 12th, he was crushing it recently. Most recently, he struck out, what, eight batters in five innings, like you said. Everybody's pining for Hunter Brown. I think there's nothing wrong with letting the pitcher marinate in the minor leagues. Don't bring him up too soon. Don't bring him up in the dog days of summer. 
bring him up late, late call up, and maybe he can contribute to the club late and a huge playoff run. So that's all I got tonight. What a great show, man. I'm excited. The Blue Jays are coming to town, and hopefully y'all go out to the ballpark. Tell your friends about Locked on Astros. All right, and uh, kind of end on a positive note, the uh, Jeremy Pena is leading the team in average right now at 308 and on base percentage with 364. And so that's kind of um, something, a positive note. So the Astros have nowhere to go up, but up from here. And uh, on a positive note, at least they're not in last place because the Rangers are, what, two and nine? At the Rangers point. are going to t- are going to be the caboose all year long. A half a billion dollars to be last. Good job, Rangers. All right. That's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. Make sure you check us out. We'll be back on Sunday to recap the Blue Jay series and Ghost Rose. Have a good weekend.